Hi, I'm Dan, and if you're new to homebrewing, so am I. Welcome to my adventures in homebrewing. Hey everybody, it's Dan, and it's that time once more to go around the world one more time and have a beer or two along the way. Thank you so much for coming out this week. Uh, thanks for tuning in last week for listening to me ramble about Baltic Porters, one of my favorite things in the world. And I will probably be putting up a, a video very soon about how the brew day went once I get it done. So this week, we're very fortunate to be having uh, Rod Maku and his partner, Don Fisher, uh, join us on the show this week. So before we jump into that, uh, I got to say thank you to the guys over at Escarpet Labs, as always, for being my sponsor for the podcast, guys. You guys are great. And I will be getting beer down to you shortly for the uh, for the couple of experiments that I've done. Also, guys, if you haven't had a chance to go check out uh, Brewer's Friend, please do. Uh, if you do join up this year with them, please use the promo code podcast and you will get 15 percent off your first year of subscription as well you know i i can't talk about these guys anymore highly you gotta go check out the brew tubers on youtube this is an online group i've just recently joined they're a fantastic online club and lots and lots and lots of information out there so you know guys this is something that is really cool and out there there uh, i know before i've had uh one of my friends on the on the show uh fred uh blind brew guy um really cool that you know someone who's visually impaired can get out there make beer and get he has a huge following now on on instagram and everything else so if you haven't had a chance go check him out and and let him know i sent you and follow his adventure so, and before we get into it with Rod, we're going to have a quick message from the sponsor. Hey, it's Dan here one more time, and I'm happy to say that we are now, or should I say my podcast is now sponsored by Escarpment Laboratories, yeast production for the fermentation of the exceptional craft beer. Whether your kit is on the stovetop or in a commercial brew house, wholesale yeast and quality control for the profitable bro pro brewer community engagement and education for the discerning home brewery. If you are a craft brewer and you love using quality yeast, then you really do need to check out Escarbon Laboratories. Dan here one more time to say thank you to the great people over at Brewer's Friend for the fantastic offer they have just given us. For all the new users of Brewer's Friend for their first year, you're going to receive 15% off. That's 50% savings on this great piece of software. And what is Brewer's Friend? Well, Brewer's Friend is a complete recipe designer, brew day planner, and journal. The details make the difference between an average batch of homebrew and a truly ex excellent brew that is repeatable. Brewer's Friend automates the details, guides you through the brewing process, and saves all the data. And how do you get all this fun stuff? Well, once you go in and you sign in and you go to sign up for Brewer's Friend and to get that 15% savings, you need to use the promo code PODCAST. That's all you gotta do when you sign up type in podcast for the promo code and you will get 15% off. Again, thank you to the great people at Brewer's Friend for this and I'll see you on the other side. All right, guys, and we are back. So uh, like I said, this week, we've got Rod and Don with us for uh, my adventures in homebrewing. And uh, Rod has um, something in similar with one of our guests that we've had on before, uh, Blind Brew Guy. Rod, how you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Thanks for coming on the show. So uh, how about you tell us a little bit about yourself? And then when Don has, when, when you're done, Don, why don't you tell us a little bit how you got into making beer? All right. Okay. Um, first of all, I want to uh, thank you for having us on the podcast. I never um, expected to be on a podcast. So it was really good that Fred uh, chimed in several months ago. So that gives uh, me an opportunity to talk about my experience and some of the issues I have when brewing beer. Um, so, because you never know, um, there might be a solution out there that I hadn't been aware of. Mm -hmm. I come from a family of uh, six children. Three of us have vision and three of us don't. But I, I feel very fortunate to have what I have. Uh, and sometimes you wouldn't draw life up in that particular way, but I really am very fortunate to have um, the, all the things that I have. I um, 
started brewing beer back in 1992. Um, there were two guys at work, and one of them was willing to come out to my house and brew the first batch of beer with me. Um, back then, I was very fortunate to obtain Charlie Papazian's book on home brewing. It was recorded on cassette, and recordings for the blind required two copies of the book to be sent to them, so that meant that somebody must have been interested in brewing beer that had a reading disability prior to my inquiry. So without that person sending in the books, it could have taken months before I would have been able to see, uh, uh, been able to read the books. And those are very helpful, mm -hmm. just covering the basics. You know, that a lot of the things he was talking about were lager beers, which clearly wasn't going to be for me as a beginner. And uh, back then, um, you, there were um, people received catalogs from all over the country. And... Um, the uh, Jeff, the guy at work, and I, we settled on Brewer's Warehouse in Seattle. I have no idea if they even exist anymore. I think they're still around, actually. Oh, really? Oh, <laughs> That's yeah. pretty good, 30 I years later. Huh? I think they're still around. Yeah, so um, I did uh, order, uh, uh, we ordered uh, a couple of brew stoves, uh, the superb brand of brew stove, and uh, keg and kettle, all that stuff. A lot of it I used um, today. And I remember opening that box and, smelling the aromas from the hops of the beer kit that mm -hmm. was in there. And that really seemed very exciting to me, the whole prospect of brewing beer. So that's, uh, you know, that's kind of how I got started into brewing beer. Jeff came over and helped me brew the first batch. And, well, then you just kind of proceed from there, learn from your mistakes, try to improve your knowledge. And, and if you enjoy the hobby, keep moving forward. Absolutely. So uh, I know, like you said, that Don helps you along the way. So Don, how did you get roped into this rabbit hole of a hobby? Well, I met Rod in 2011. And um, the first time he asked me to come down and help him, he scared the living daylights out of me when he lit that brew stove. And that because he turns the gas on, he takes a wooden match and it goes foof. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, one of the biggest things that I could do for him was tell him what the temperature of things were because he couldn't he couldn't read a thermometer by any means and that so um, I could tell him what the temperatures were and um, help to control the flame on the on the stove and that to help to prevent boil overs and things like right. that and um, boy you get those those grains in there and then you get those hops in there and the aroma that comes out of that kettle is just amazing and stuff so that is how he wrote me into doing it and stuff. So we've been doing it ever since. Oh, fantastic. So for what I've been reading, Rod, is that uh, you've been doing mainly uh, kits. So is that like with the liquid malt extract or are you using all grain? No, um, I really, I'd like to get into all brew, grain brewing someday, but that has been a problem um, for me um, because of um, not being able to know what the settings are, being able to know what the temperature readings are. Um, my biggest problem with temperature is steeping grain at 155 degrees right. because it's not too hot. I mean, it's too hot to touch. It's not really making, the kettle's not making any noises as it, as it expands, and there's no bubbling in the water. When I get close to um, the boiling point there, uh, you get the rolling boil, Mm -hmm. And you get the bubbling, and if you tap on the kettle, the uh, kettle won't ring if the boil is rolling. So that's not too bad. I could tell, um, I got verification, I think, from that part when Dawn would read the temperatures, and sure enough, right around the 211 mark, um, the kettle would uh, stop ringing. And, of course, if you go a little further, you get boil over. Right. So that, that didn't prove to be a problem. It's, it's those other temperatures. And um, in the beginning... Uh, I would do kits a lot of the times. Sometimes I would just go to the brew, sh um, to the local brew shop, and I'd say, "Well, what kind of what do you what do you suggest I make uh, this time?" And then they would give me the uh, hops and the, um, and then they would give me the you know sell me the yeast and the extracts, and then, and then just yeah, just do this. It'd be the normal type one hour boil with uh, finishing hops, etc. I have a talking scale which eventually mm -hmm. died, and I've replaced it that I could use to measure. Uh, weigh the hops. Uh, it was usually 
20 grams or, you know, 10 grams. That's a lot of times what was required. And there was um, probably a margin of 10% error, but, you know, but, you know uh, when you have an error like that and you're not measuring an expensive commodity, as long as it doesn't affect the flavor, it really doesn't matter too much. So that was how I would weigh out my hops when I was um, doing it alone. Now we have a digital scale, and mm-hmm. and Don can weigh that out, or, or now I have my talking scale. If, if I'm less worried about accuracy, we can do that. for. Oh, I, I also used to do it to measure grain, six yeah. ounces of grains, and you know you do that 168 grams or whatever it is. Okay. So, so what have you found uh, for – Yourself, I'm assuming that your your vision you uh, lost it o- gradually over time, or you or you maybe ne- may not have had it. But what have you found tips and tricks for yourself uh, for equipment and things that help you with your brew day? Um, yeah, uh, the the three of us that um, are have a vision problem in my family all have no vision. We were all born um, born that way, and so. Um, it can help people if they have had vision in the beginning and then they lose it later on. They um, understand the small things or how to do things that people who have been uh, congenitally blind Mm -hmm. do not always understand. But things um, like sanitizing, sanitizing, siphoning, uh, those are just uh, basic things, measuring water. Those are, are basic things that... You can do whether or not you have whether or not you have sight. But um, um, let's see some of the things uh, the tricks I used here. Uh, uh, I'm trying to find in my notes where I had some of them so I don't forget. Like when the um, when I you guess get a feeling that the kettle is about 180 or 190 because mm-hmm. there's getting a fair amount of activity uh, from the kettle expanding then that is the time when I would probably start uh, adding my um, extracts and um, stirring them in. And like I talked about earlier, when I, I, w- I would tap on the kettle to know when the boiling point was uh, reached, mm-hmm. I would also listen to the hiss coming from the stove to try to determine the level of heat um, that was being produced from the, uh, from the, the stove. But uh, Unfortunately, the stove I have, those valves move, don't move easily, and they're not easily marked. So oftentimes when I do it by myself, I will, I will be able to find that, that sweet spot where the um, temperature stabilizes at 210, 211. Mm-hmm. Um, but every once in a while, you know, you get those days where it just doesn't quite work and you're monkeying with the uh, uh, valve a few times until you can get it to settle in. Yeah. Now, I know that feeling. I mean, I use an all, all-in-one all electric system at home. So, because, uh, I mean, I, it's something that I, I have something against oh, people with who use propane burners. and that. You guys are fantastic that you're able to do that. It's, I don't trust myself because knowing me, I kind of maybe blow my house up and my wife would kill me. So, And Don's trying to control the laughter because she knows it's probably come close a couple times with you guys. So. <laughs> Yes, I knew you didn't like um, doing gas. I've heard your other podcast yeah. where you told me you stuck with electric, but you know I'm very careful around it. And I know if something would happen, they'd say, "What is a blind guy doing with natural gas or propane gas?" But mm-hmm. you know, I I feel comfortable around it, and as long as I don't have any major scares, I I'm fine with it for now. There you go. So, Don, what do you think about uh, Rod uh, his hobby with all that? With you guys doing it together? I mean. Um, my wife is like, yeah, no, that's your thing. I want nothing to do with it. Um, I think it's great that he does that. And I mean, there's so many different things that Rod, as a blind person, does in addition to making beer. And um, he makes really good beer. I mean, we've had we've had our our batches that didn't turn out very well and stuff. And we've had a few that we had to dump. But we've figured out, or he's basically figured out, what did we do wrong and what do we need to do in the future to make these beers be correct and um, we started making yeast starters and the only bad experience we had with that was when the um the pyrex glass thing that i can't remember the name of was in the kettle and all of a sudden i heard crack and it's like oh no so um 
we have a little better way of making our yeast starters now in that. But yeah, Rod will just, he'll get on the computer and he'll Google things and try to figure out what have we done wrong that didn't work with this and stuff. And then we just move forward with it. So I think it's great that he does that. Right on. So doing this together, have you found that, that, that it's uh, a fun affair that you both get to do it together? Or do you feel that it's, well, it's, I'm here as mainly just to make sure Rod doesn't hurt himself or are you here to make sure that the house doesn't burn down or is it, is it, is it truly like an event for the two of you? It is truly an event for the two of us because we each have our own roles that we do. I mean, Rod gets the kettle ready. He gets, you know, all filled up with the water and stuff. And sometimes he'll get the, the grains in the bag and sometimes I do that. Um, but as far as temperature and stuff, I do the temperature of all of that for him. And um, when we have the, the hour boil done and we're cooling everything off, um, Rod is great about getting the sink full of ice or snow in this case because we're in Wisconsin. And um, we, he's got this wonderful pump and this chiller and we, like in 12 minutes, we have the, the work cooled down enough to be able to get it in the carboy. So he'll put it in the carboy and then I'll test, I'll do the test for it to find out what the original gravity is and put the yeast in and we're ready to go with it. So it really is, I would say, a, a very joint effort. And that so we, we work it out quite well. Right on. So I'm gonna, this is to do both of you. What are some of your favorite styles to make then? Go ahead, Rod. Well, I, um, you know, I don't know if we have a favorite style. I used to um, many times make a um, uh, Pete's Wicked Ale clone, but I, I've kind of gotten away from that. I, I think one of the problems is we've tried various styles to see what they're like, but we don't brew enough beer. And I don't know that we've really settled on some really go-to styles that we always like to make. We've had better luck settling on go to styles of wine that we make mm -hmm. using the wine kits than we have with the beer kits. Yeah. And something I was going to probably ask you, Dan, was if you have a good suggestion for a good recipe source, uh, you know, so I sure. can, uh, so I can maybe uh, more easily find different uh, styles I want to make. Oh, Some of them absolutely. we made are, are Kolsch. We've made stouts. Mm -hmm. We've mm -hmm. made. Um, we tried, um, what do you call those, Hef Hefeweizens? Hefeweizens, yeah. Hefeweizens. They're, they're, those I, are, that's a solid beer. But I never got the banana flavor I was looking for like I used to taste in the oh. old um, Hacker Shore beers. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Right yeah. So th that's the one flavor I really don't enjoy in beer is the banana oh. flavor. So I usually try and stay away from the saisons and things like that. Just because it's, it's, it's not that it's bad. It's not that I don't enjoy it. It's just something I normally just don't enjoy to drink. But yeah. for, for, for resources, absolutely. So there are all kinds of really cool books out there uh, that I use. Uh, things like uh, there's the um, Beer Bible by uh, Garrett Oliver. There's another one specifically out there called the Beer Bible. Uh, but if you're looking for general guidelines and really in-depth looks in the things, um, if you use a brewing software like Brewer's Friend or Brewfather or anything else like that, normally you have access to all kinds of recipes that are out there. And all you have to do is just go into the search engine and type in, say, like bourbon stout or stout or whatever it is that you're looking for. And you have a wealth of different range of, of, of recipes that you can pull from, uh, be it from partial grain and, and uh, liquid malt extract to kits to full on all grain beer wealth of wealth of knowledge and if ever you're curious about what kind of yeasts and things like that you can use if you actually reach out to the actual company that you're thinking about using see it like escarpment labs or lelemans or safe ask them and they'll say yeah this is what we recommend you use and it's it's pretty cool what the craft beer community will do for each other okay well that's good to know yeah i think i don't have i haven't I guess we don't even know many craft brewers. We just kind of read about them and hear about them. Yeah. So our network is kind of small. 
it would probably be a good idea for us to try to spend time or for me to build that network up a, a bit. Well, in, even if you go into like, um, say if you go into, like I was saying, the brew tubers um, on, on YouTube, um, it costs nothing to join. And we can like, we're always the, there to help everybody. And, and that's the cool thing about this hobby, I find, is that we don't care um who you are what you are what color you are whatever it doesn't really, doesn't matter at all because we're all in this together and we're all here to help each other and have some fun along the way and, and that's what i found when i got back into making beer one is i was very hesitant in getting back into it mainly because after being in the military for so long you like you get used to timings it's this 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 and this there's no deviations yeah. there's no this there's no that now i'm making something i'm like oh well oh, 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 it's it's gone up above where it's supposed to be what do i do well dan just drop your temperature you'd be fine i'm like but you're not thinking that you're thinking it by this time it needs to be here and so i had to learn to let those anxieties and things like that go i mean uh I, i've told people in the past that from my time in uh, in the military, I got diagnosed with post traumatic stress disorder from my last deployment to Afghanistan, and my anxiety levels when it comes to certain things goes to the roof. So when I get overwhelmed, I have to find a way to bring myself down. And being in my little brewery in my garage, I find ways where I just zone out and do my thing, and all that goes away. So, yeah, wow, that's great because if you can just find things to get your mind off life's problems and reduce stress, that's that's what it's all about. Absolutely. So, it, it, for me, that's what I do, but it amazes me when someone like yourself can make the, these things happen for yourself and you still you're smiling about it. And this is like, you're like, this is what I think craft beer or home brewing and all that is it's a community of everyone coming together to help each other out and i'm pretty sure fred's listening to this fred if you're listening to this this is someone you need to tee up with and help him out give him some advice on how you make things work and everything else because fred does all grain and he's got all kinds of cool little toys all set up for himself like when he ha he does uh, believe brew in the bag and so when he does his brewing and he lifts, lifts out the bag, he has like a pulley system, which helps him raise the bag up over his kettle and he squeezes out all the extra liquid. So Fred, if you're listening, um, reach out, leave me a comment on this so, and let me know if it's okay if I give your information to Rod and I'll get the two of you guys in touch. If, if you're okay with that. That sounds good. Yeah, all right. That, that sounds good. So, um, yeah, uh, yeah, I've heard your um, other interviews with uh, your interview with Fred, and that was very interesting. And that was what yeah. made me, me uh, send in uh, uh, email to you. Well, I greatly appreciate it. And, you, you know, if ever there's a time down the line you need some help, and if I can, just reach out. And it's, I mean, you may be in Wisconsin, not in Canada, but it's still, it's, it's still beer. It's, uh, we're, we're all in it together. Yeah, and I did hear your comment about the YouTubers on the um, other podcast I listened to briefly, but I just hadn't got around to checking that one out. So I'm going, going to yep. definitely check that one out. So uh, if you want, I'll, I'll forward you uh, some links to some of the guys for the BrewTubers. And uh, they, uh, it's pretty cool what we do. They do yeast experiments. They do... Um, competitions lots of video drops because we all share what we learn along the way to help everybody now what do you do for yourself that you think that someone else who may be visually impaired may benefit from for knowing when they're actually getting back into this boy um you know i guess there are a lot of variations of course just like with anybody else so a lot of it depends on really motivation some of it has to do with the the network they have. If somebody can um, uh, help them in the small areas, just to give them confidence that if I want to do this, I can do it. And so, you know, like for some people, gas is okay. Other people, electric's okay. I mean, I I don't really have an easy answer. It's really what the person may feel most comfortable with, what environment they are most comfortable most comfortable with. Okay. And I guess if somebody would have questions for me about their specific situation um, and how to deal with it when they do not have vision, I'd be feel I'd 
um, be more than happy to help them work, and work through some of those issues as well. Okay. And Don, what do you think for someone who ha has a partner who may be visually impaired, what do you think you can do or they can do to support them if they're getting in, into this crazy rabbit hole of a hobby? Yeah. Um, well, I think one of the biggest things is organization. Um, we just, over the past couple of years, created what I would call Rod's brewing room in his basement. And um, we were able to get a really nice big sink and a big table and some shelving units in there. And um, it's a matter of, because I know it's hard for him to find stuff at times, you know, if he doesn't remember quite where he put it, or if I pick it up and put it away, then he doesn't know where it is. And so I think organization is a really big deal. And that so and recently, we, uh, Rod just was fixing some of the kegs that he has, replacing the, I don't know what they're called, those things that you put the gas on and the- The um, posts, yeah, the poppets. Yes, and, thank you, yeah. then the poppets and that. And um, we actually, he got those fixed and we actually bought some little plastic discs that have numbers on them. Mm -hmm. And we have used electrical ties and attached the numbers to, the, there's numbers on the carboys and there's numbers on the kegs. So then when we make up a beer, I, on the recipe, I'll write down what numbers are which, so I know which ones are which, and Rod can feel the number. They're not braille, they're just plastic, and the numbers are just engraved in them, but he can feel the numbers, and so then he knows which ones are which by um, touching those little discs on each of them. So I, I keep track of what carboy number it went into, and then when he racks it into the, into the keg, I know what number he's racked it to and stuff, and so that's the real easy way for us to keep track of what is what. So I think organization is, is a really big deal for us. That's awesome. So in passing, Rod, we, we were talking a little bit about a little bit more about your, 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 your private life a little bit. And there was something you wanted to talk about. You wanted to talk about uh, men's health. You wanted to bring awareness, a maybe a little bit to uh, prost prostate care uh, awareness. Um, I just wanted to mention briefly that um, um, men um, should be aware of uh, the possibility of prostate cancer. It is probably the equivalent to maybe when women's concerns about breast cancer. And I would just encourage men to, um, to uh, um, look for sources to maybe be educated a little bit about prostate uh, about the prostate just in case they do have prostate cancer. About a year and a half ago, I was uh, diagnosed with it. Well, you know, I'd heard a little bit about it, but I really didn't have the background I needed that would have been very helpful to me and reduced my stress levels because I'm somebody who likes to understand what might be going on. So two quick sources you might try be, would be Patrick Walsh's survive, um, Guide to Surviving Prostate Cancer which is really more about more than that, about more than just surviving prostate cancer. It discusses the functions of the prostate, et cetera, and what to do if you get prostate cancer. The last uh, source, which I haven't um, gone to very much, but our support group um, apparently likes this uh, website, and that's the uh, Prostate Cancer Foundation, PCF.org. So anyway, um, it, it's one of those things that are, are better to be caught early than late, but whenever you, if you get it, whenever you catch it, you just do the best that you can. So I just wanted people to be aware. I think this month might actually even be Prostate Awareness Month. Yeah, I think it is. And um, one of the things I know I have, I have two brothers and I don't know if either of them go to the doctor regularly and have their PSAs checked. Um, that's how Rod's was uh, uncovered and stuff. And um, it's really important to do that. And where Rod mentioned the, the book and um, that the support group, um, when we were dealing with having the, the surgery to have the prostate removed and things, um, the so-called education that they gave us was far from educational. And Rod found that book about what, six months, I think, after he had had the surgery. And that book taught, told us things that oh, we wish we had known that before 
he had had the, the surgery and that, and he even talked to the surgeon about it and they really weren't very helpful at all about educating us and that. So um, being aware and getting a good education if you're diagnosed with it is very important. Right. The good, yeah, the good news is we wouldn't have changed. We wouldn't have done anything different, but it would have been nice to know. Yeah, no, there's there, there's a wealth of knowledge out there and not everybody knows everything. Not even the doctors know everything. And it, sometimes it's beneficial to to educate yourself and make sure you, you take care of yourselves. So guys, mainly the guys, please make sure you get yourselves checked. It's it's a it's not. I admit it's not the most pleasant thing in the world to have checked. I admit it, but it is important to get checked. Your loved one, loved ones want you kicking around for a little while longer. Do it. It's a, it's a two minute check and it's worth a lifetime of happiness down the road. So I think we're kind of come close to the end of the show, guys. Thanks a lot for being on the show. Greatly appreciate it. And uh, please stay in touch and, uh, we will uh, definitely, if ever you need a hand with anything, just reach out. I'm more than willing to help. Say, uh, Dan, I'd like to uh, mention one more thing before yeah. we close. Um, if anybody has any idea of how one might be able to do all grain brewing without a uh, vision, that would be knowing the temperatures and the settings on the propane system, whether it's using your iPhone or another method, I'd be really interested in hearing about, uh, about that system. There are some interesting systems out there, but I, I can't use them and and I'm not able to brew independently. Well, you're talking to the right guy because I have a few friends I'm gonna, I was about to reach out to and rattle their cage and see if they have any uh, any advice for you. So if you're Great. if you're if you're patient with me, I'll try and get you some answers. Oh, so, I've only been waiting 25 years, so I'll, <laughs> I think I'll be okay. All right, so bear with me. I'll do my best to get you some answers. Um, and I'm probably also going to talk to some of the guys I know over at Spike Brewing, uh, see if they may be working on anything and that might tickle your okay. fancy. Great, great. All right. Well, so thanks for having us on. We really appreciate it. No worries. Thanks for being on the show, guys. Greatly appreciate it. Um, hopefully, uh, if you're a golfer, you're you're maybe going to enjoy uh, having the Ryder Cup in down at uh, Whistling Straits this year. Uh, I know I've got buddies down oh. there right now. Uh, going to be taking a uh, part in the, something called the caddies uh the caddy school for soldiers so and they're going to be there uh, watching the Ryder cup this week so guys thanks a lot for being on the show please stay in touch and we will be um we'll be we'll be around the world one more time when the beer two along the way thanks for the ride and i'll see you on the other side hang on Very guys we're, we're not we're not done yet just hang tight mm-hmm.